Well, ahead of next week's virtual summit hosted by President Biden and the big climate conference in Glasgow later this year, campaigners are calling for health to be put front and centre of the negotiations and policy making. They say the cost savings of improving people's health will go a long way to offsetting the costs of climate mitigation and adaptation. Jenny Miller is Executive Director of the Global Climate and Health Alliance, which brings together health NGOs and organisations of health workers uh, from around the world. First, what does putting health at the forefront of climate negotiations mean in practice? If countries build health into their climate planning, not only are they thinking about how they need to be protecting people's health through their climate action and are acutely aware that failing to take the necessary action has impact for people's lives and and well-being, but also there are huge potential benefits from thinking about health as you're designing your climate policies. Isn't it by definition, I don't mean to be glib here, but isn't it by definition a health Mm -hmm. issue in the sense that if if warming gets out of hand, you know, lots of us are going to die? Well, yes, of course. Um, Unfortunately, in the climate conversation, health often gets left out. And part of the reason that that's a problem is because the climate policies that you would design in order to simply cut CO2 emissions, cut greenhouse gas emissions, are not necessarily the same policies that you would design if that was your goal and you were paying attention to health as well. Another thing that happens when health gets left out of the conversation is that kind of those real consequences of failing to meet the level of action that we need to take Um, those consequences get forgotten if countries recognize the impacts on people's lives, their livelihoods, their well-being, their productivity. And if people also realize that that's what's at stake, there would be, I think, tremendous support for taking the kinds of actions that we need to take. Ah, Yeah, that's interesting. So do you think it's going to be easier to sell some of the sacrifices to the public if it's framed in health terms? I think that recognizing that these things are bound together, that without climate action, we won't have a healthy planet that will protect the health of the people living on it. I think that can help motivate support for climate action. How optimistic are you feeling about some of the big upcoming meetings this year on this? We've obviously got next week's virtual summit that President Biden's hosting. We've got the big climate summit here in the UK at the end of the year. I mean, are you feeling like some progress is going to be be made or is it all rather hanging in the balance at this stage? It looks like the Biden administration is probably going to come in with some pretty strong commitments. There are other countries that I understand are in in dialogue about that. But we can't take for granted that governments will take the actions that are needed. Urgent action is important. I don't think we can take it for granted. Jenny Miller, Executive Director of the Global Climate and Health Alliance. That's it for this edition of News Hour from me and the rest of the team here in London. Thanks for being with us over the past hour. Until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.